What's going on guys? King Strats here back with another video on the channel and today we did a loco moco. Now, Hawaii, I'm sorry, okay? I know this is not a traditional loco moco. People, every time I make something that I call a loco moco that's not like the ones that they make in Hawaii, I get a lot of stuff from people, which I get. We'll get into it, but it's my own take. I don't like to make things traditionally most of the times. I'm very weird with my palate, so I like to remix stuff, but you know how that gets down. Oh, I'm thirsty. It's been a long day. Long day. Oh, yeah. I always have to get my little... The coldest water. I do like this bottle a lot. I've been using it like crazy. And I'm still waiting on my gallon. It should be here any day now. I haven't tracked it once. And I know things are very hard to get these days. Promptly. Just because of, you know, the mail stuff. But... Um, the link is in my description for the giveaway that I'm doing, and as well as if you want to order one yourself. No pressure, I'm not telling you to, but a lot of people have been interested in these, and they are pretty good. So, if you do want one, you can get a discount using the discount code that is down there, and I do find it very good. And, they, look, it's, I'm not making that up. You should know by now that I don't do that kind of stuff. But anyway, I want to do, you know what, no, 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 let's, let's do it, let's do the egg. Do people get mad with the egg yolk stuff? Do you not like that? Do you not like... Some people find yolks, like runny yolks, disgusting. Or whatever. You know, but me, I am an egg yolk guy through and through. Give me some of that. Hold on, let me get some of the rice. You know. I'm starting to drool. I can't see, but does this look good? Uh huh. The flavor is just crazy. You can see the burger. Mm. Just the burger. I could have just made the burger and it been good. But you can see. Nice medium rare. How I like it. Season. Season it off in the cast iron. I'm just freaking it really fast. It is so good. Mm. Almost curse. Can't curse. It's one of the things I have to get used to. I'm a person who... I have a work voice which is what you're hearing now i try to speak a little more professionally but at the same time i still am at a level of comfort doing this that in my everyday speech i also curse so i'm like balancing the work voice which is my like i hate using the word proper because it's not necessarily proper english but a more business-like approach when i'm running at my job this is how i talk uh but at the same time, I'm still being casual. And when I'm talking to my friends, I curse a lot. You know? In the great state of New Jersey, <laughs> you know I love my... I love the Jersey stuff. I actually have New Jersey tatted on me. It's the back of my arm. Um, but... Curse words are just... In casual speech, my parents cursed a lot. Obviously, not when need be. If I don't have to curse, I don't, but... When I'm having something like this... It's just like, <laughs> that's so good. I wish that I could share this with you guys. I wish that I could make you some food. Some of that pork. Some of that pork. And you can come eat it. Pork was done in a pressure cooker and then slow cooked. You can cut the time in half. Mm. Oh, green. Same thing. Pressure cooker. Slow cooked. Gotta trust the process. I can't eat this fast enough. Oh man. Sometimes you make stuff and it just it like hits the spot. You know how you're in the mood for something and you're just like you know, when you finally get it. This is probably going to be the weirdest analogy ever. But, it's almost like, level of satisfaction wise. It's almost like, when you're outside your house, right? And you really have to go to the bathroom. Number one, right? And you're like fumbling for your keys, you can't get in. And you finally get to the bathroom. And then it's just like, 
oh, it's just, like, it just feels so good to finally like release, you know? I know that was a weird analogy, but I get the same thing with food. I'm not a cravings eater for the most part. I'm more of a, I get hungry while I'm cooking. Not hungry, but cravings like, I decided to make a locomoco probably maybe a few hours ago. And I wasn't thinking about food up until then. I never do. So, I want people that, a lot of times people say I make them hungry. I, it doesn't happen to me. If I see something that looks good, I'm just like, that looks good, but I don't like get hungry off of it, you know? But what happens though, is if I'm cooking, because I was like, oh, loco moco, that sounds good. But now, you start seasoning the meat. You start cooking the rice. Right, rice got garlic in it. It's got herbs. You know, saffron make it yellow. The beef, when it hits the skillet, and you start smelling it. Now I'm like, oh man. Not, for me, looking at food doesn't make me hungry. But if I smell something that smells really good, that's when I'm like, oh man. I don't know. Some people eat with their eyes. Um, it's a common expression. And people say I don't eat fruit, right? When I tell you, I mean, I get it with the pineapple, with the pork. Not on a pizza, but on this. When I tell you that I love pineapple, especially when it's cooked, mm, especially with something salty and spicy. I'm not going to lie, I've made a lot of burgers in my life. That's one of the better ones I've ever made. I'm not talking about my own cooking. But I do enjoy it. You know, people always... Do you really like the food you like as much? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. And I kind of was alluding to it before. If you're making your own food... You know what you like. You know something's going to taste good. That's the burp. I hate that. I'm going to try not the burp. Did you see me hide it in there? <laughs> what? Damn it. <laughs> I tried not to and then I get it and then I hit it and then here it is. It is what it is. Just know that when I'm making weird eating noises or there's food on my face, I actually don't like it. So, I know that some people think that like content creators will, you know, make moaning noises while they're eating or... I, I can only speak for myself. But, or like the burping or like, you know, food all over themselves. Like, I can only be me. I don't really know how to be that. I don't know anybody else who does it. I've seen videos. I don't know who does it on purpose or who doesn't. I'm not saying anybody does. But people think, which is the main thing. People think that we do. I mean, like, you know, I'm making these over-the-top reactions over something that I cooked. It's not over the top. I can tell you that I just dropped a piece of rice. Not with me. My cleavage. But when the camera's not on, I do that. When I sit there by myself, there's no one, I'm sorry again, there's no one that can like tell you because it's just me, but I'm like, mm. like while I'm eating, I'm like, man, good job on this. And is all my food perfect? No, no. But the flavors is something that I know I'm going to like before I even eat it. It's like if I told you to go in your fridge right now, right? Or... Go to, I don't know, a sandwich spot. Go to your favorite sandwich. I'm not going to say a franchise, but a mom and pop, anything. So go to a sandwich spot and build a sandwich. Isn't that sandwich going to be delicious every time? You, you're building your own sandwich, right? That you're familiar with. So you're not going to put anything on the sandwich that you're not liking, right? So for me, when I cook my own food, it's a lot of the same thing. 
I'm going to season it the way I want to season it. I'm going to cook it the way I want to cook it. So, I like it every time. And every time, my reaction is genuine. I can't help that I love food. I'm glad that I love working out too. I'd be in trouble. Even though people like, still don't really understand the whole, you know, how am I not fat thing. Most of you, if you watch my YouTube, you get it. But this meal is all I've eaten today. And I forgot the exact calories. It's in my food journal, but it's something like 2,000, 2,100, 2,200, somewhere in that category. And man, my size, if you don't know. Now, of course, I'm going off U.S. measurements, not the metric system. But about 215, 220 pounds. And I'm six foot one. It takes a lot of calories to power someone. Not saying as big as me, but I'm not a small person by any means either. You know? So, mmm. It's going to work. That pork, man. And this is probably way too late in the video for you to notice. Or for me too. Some people don't know what a loco moco is. Very popular. Started in Hawaii. And the main things that are in a loco moco, rice, gravy, burger patty, eggs. I've only been to Hawaii once. And that was like the ones that I, traditional. I've seen some crazy ones, variations. Anytime something popular, people start doing crazy stuff with them. And a lot of times what happens is traditionalists get upset by it. You know, I've seen Hawaiians, in general, which I'm not saying is a bad thing to do, but be like, you know, that's not a locomoco, which you're not wrong at all. Hold up. But when things become popular in any way, shape, or form, oh man, that's so good. I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize every time, I'm telling you. But when things become popular, tacos, burritos, loco mocos, pizza, what you're going to get, excuse me again, come one more time, I think. I'll tell you the thoughts. But what you're going to get are people who decide to do like different crazy fusion types of things with it. You know? Tacos, hard shell, not traditional. People will yell at you for getting, you know, flour tortillas. I get it. But, especially in America, and I'm only saying it in the sense of our heritage as Americans comes from people coming here. I'm talking about today's American heritage. But, it comes from people coming here. And their culture combining with other cultures. So, you know, you get things like Tex-Mex. Or the types of sushi that we eat here. Or the types of Chinese food that we eat here. You think they eat General Tso's chicken in China? Because they don't. I actually think General Tso's chicken was invented in San Francisco. You get what I'm saying? Now... Some of the flavors and things like, but if you go in the city, I say, see, I see, I'm saying New York City, and a lot of places will have things that aren't on the menu that people will go and get that they eat more in China as what we do here. Like, I had sushi last night, and one of the rolls I got was a chicken katsu roll. Now, I love chicken katsu, but it's not sushi. 
It's not even really a. It's a roll that they make here. I'm so sorry. I'm eating too fast because it's good. But you know, spicy chicken rolls. In fact, a lot of times the wasabi that you get here isn't wasabi. It's actually horseradish that's been doctored up. You know, and you can go down the line. I've seen burritos with fried chicken in them, burritos with french fries in them. Like, they're not doing that in Mexico. The Mission Burrito was actually invented in the Mission District. And the Mission Burrito is the one that's popular in the States today more than any other one. You know, most people don't think of the wet burrito that you would get if you were asking for a burrito burrito. But the Mission Burrito is the one that people think of when they get like the Chipotle's and things of that nature. And I've seen burritos with fried chicken and french fries in them. Or even a breakfast burrito. That's not tradition, you know? So, a lot of times when I cook, I try to think a little outside the box. And I also try to say, okay, well, I love a loco moco, which usually comes with white rice. But wouldn't it have a little more flavor if I added yellow to it? You know what I mean? No, it's not traditional. So, I guess maybe if I called it, like, not a loco moco, <laughs> then people, I, you know, I don't, I just, I'm not easily offended but I don't like to offend other people, especially a culture. You know, food is a big part of people's culture, so I get that. Uh, paella is another one. Ooh, man. I used to make paella all the time on Instagram, right? <laughs> I would have a billion people, random people, just saying stuff to me in Spanish, <laughs> like that it's not paella and I shouldn't. Have Those are, they're, they're saying it in Spanish. They don't think I understand Spanish, but I do, in fact. So, they're saying it's not quite a, well, it's hard, but, you know, but I've had it. No, it's not. It's mine. But the other thing is, is that I'm cooking a lot of times with ingredients that are macro friendly. So, I can't use certain things that you would make with traditional stuff. You know, a lot of food comes with a lot of oil. And I don't cook with a lot of oil. I'm starting to add more into it so that I can make better content type of food. But what's happening is my meals get smaller and people are like, that's not a normal amount of food for you. No. Volume wise. Because olive oil has a ton of calories. Per tablespoon. So, you know, people throw four or five tablespoons of olive oil in their food. Like, you just threw five or six hundred calories in your food. I just want to i let you know. You threw a lot of calories into your food. You know. Certain food like peanut butter. I love peanut butter, but I rarely eat it. Just because I look at my calories in a day like a budget. And I can't. I don't want to spend three to four hundred calories on two scoops of peanut butter. You know. And that's why people don't realize when they say, I don't know how I'm gaining weight or how I don't gain weight. When I say macro friendly, I'm talking about things like, for example, this burger piece. Now, a little nutrition class. It's kind of boring, isn't it? But I think it's important to talk about these kinds of things. I don't want to encourage people to eat in a certain manner because they see me doing it and they're not understanding some of the stuff that comes behind it. So I try to explain some of this stuff, but did I drink all that again? I'm extra thirsty. I'm like DM sliding thirsty. If this was 80-20, which is what you would get in a restaurant most of the time, is 80-20, is a fat to meat ratio. The calories would be exponentially a lot higher than what I'm eating now, which is 96-4. 93.7 or 96.4 have 4 to 7 grams of fat. Also about 140 to 170, 80, I'm off the top of my head, somewhere in that region, calories per serving, which is uh, 4 ounces. If this was 80.20, you're talking about 340 calories. So if I had an 8 ounce patty, you're talking the difference of 350 to 400 calories to 
seven to 800 calories. And that's before you put cheese on it. That's before you put, so that's the kind of things that people don't realize. There is a difference. Does 96.4 meat, I'm going to eat that because it's a too juicy. Cost more? Yeah. So, it's a lot more expensive per pound. You can drain the fat out of other meats, but still, it's a lot leaner, even with steak and things of that nature. Certain things have better calories, macros, things like that. I'm not talking nutrients, just from the per sorts of calories. So, if I want to have an egg, I use 96.4 meat. And it kind of gives me a bit of an offset because an egg's about 70 calories. Get me? So for an 8-ounce patty, which was 700 calories, I'm bad at math, but calories I got down pretty good. So for an 8-ounce eight, eight patty, that's about 700 calories. I had an 8-ounce patty, which was about 350 calories. Right? Like 140, yeah, 140. <laughs> 280. There's 280 calories plus 70 and another 140 calories. So now I'm at, I'm bad at math off the top of my head. I'm a calculator guy, <laughs> but it's about 320. What? What was that? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm even joking. Somebody out there laughing at me. Look, I was a straight A student. I have a master's degree. Okay. But math, I know my limitations when it comes to counting numbers off the top of my head. I'm just, I, I can spin them out, but I'm calculating them, my, my brain works too fast. So, again, 140 times 2 for an 8 ounce gives you 280 plus 140 for the egg. <laughs> so it's at 420. <laughs> Look, it's still less to have two eggs and 8 ounce patty 96 for meat than it is to have one 8 ounce ground round meat 80, 20, 75, 25 I've seen. If you go to a restaurant and you're eating ground, you're eating chuck, you're eating 80, 20. I'm telling you that. Unless they specify on there that they're using lean or sirloin, which is 90-10, for extra lean, you're eating 80-20. You know why? Because fat tastes good. So it's not as easy to make something look appetizing when you're actually making it a macro-friendlier, I don't want to say healthier, but a macro-friendlier version. If I use regular stuff, this meal will be half the size. And I can still eat it. But it wouldn't fill me up in the manner that I'd like to. So, you have to sacrifice somewhere. Like me using fat-free cheese. People are like, oh, that's not enough cheese. Or, they'll say that cheese melts weird. Yeah, it's fat-free. You can eat regular cheese. You just be eating a lot less of it. You get what I'm saying? So, there, there's different ways to go about it. I would rather choose to have some stuff. Olive oil now I'm adding. Regular eggs I'm adding. To get back up there. Normally when people make pulled pork, pork like this, it's pork shoulder. Pork shoulder has a lot more fat marbling. It melts a lot better when it cooks. It's a lot juicier. It's harder to make what this is. Which is pork tenderloin. There's no fat in pork tenderloin. There's like two grams of fat a serving, which is nothing. Nothing. This entire meal, I forgot what the final number was. I think it was something like 45 grams of fat. Think about that. With gravy and eggs and ground beef. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know people don't like talking about diet stuff. I understand that. The things that get... The most views on YouTube are the most fattiest, artery cloggingest type of food. And as I jump into the content creation on YouTube, I'm doing Instagram for a while. YouTube I just started two weeks ago. I'm starting to notice the trends when it comes to stuff like that. Big artery clogging meals, especially with mukbangs and things of that nature. Mukbangs, if you call it that. I've heard two different pronunciations at this point. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't like doing that. But it might be kind of switched to the spoon. I don't like eating rice with a fork. But with the burger, it's kind of a necessary evil. But we're going over this one. But the ones that get the best views, things, you know, 
go to, to, to the franchise type of restaurants or, you know, seafood's a big one also. But the indulgence type of foods, which I get. So I'm on the brink because I enjoy that stuff and it is a part of what I do. But so is this. And as much as I enjoy doing this and as much as I can enjoy creating content that people will watch, I also don't want to all of a sudden lose my health aspect of what I do, which is this kind of meal. Making meals that look unhealthy but are nutrient dense and macro friendlier. And I don't want to ruin my body for views. You get what I'm saying? So, it's a little bit of like a... I couldn't ever see myself just going to, okay, I'm having Papa John's today, Pizza Hut tomorrow, Domino's this day, you know, Chipotle, and, and just eating that kind of stuff on a daily basis, especially with the amount of food that I do eat, and the fact that I do eat one meal a day does still allow for big meals. So, but at the same time, you can't live off of that kind of stuff forever, you know. You don't want that to be the bulk of your diet. At all. So I'm, I'm getting there. Not to say I don't have stuff planned for this week that's not macro friendly. But I have to make sacrifices along the lines. So. It's not all bad, but these are things that I have to think about as this goes. And thank you again, anybody who watched all this stuff, like, you're awesome. I'm just eating and talking, and I enjoy it now. I enjoy responding to comments. I enjoy vibing, kind of sitting down with my food and just having to talk with yourself instead of watching the television. It's more productive. They say TV rots your brain. I haven't watched much TV in the last week or so because my time that I watched TV was now when I was eating. Um, though on Saturday, I have to bring it up. I did watch the Black Panther on Saturday. Um, it's crazy because the last time I sat down with you guys, I did say that I was going out with my friends. And I had a good time. But it kind of killed my vibe because it was about 10 o'clock when the news came out. And I was just about to leave my house. And I checked my phone to see if my friends were ready. And it comes across in the news ticker. And I just remember being like, oh. Because, you know, it just, it always puts things in perspective. It's like with Kobe, and I actually have uh, an authentic, it's, it's over here. I can probably grab it if I want to, whatever, but Kobe was my favorite basketball player ever. And I'm a diehard Celtics fan, so for me to say a Laker, my favorite basketball player, that's how much admiration that I had for him, always. Like, that jersey's probably 10 years old, and the reason I have it over there, I have a, a messy jersey, too, over here. Um, you can't see, and I can't grab it because it's way too high. But I'm collecting memorabilia of my favorite athletes, and I had that for a while. But I'm about to frame it to put it in my office. But that same news hit me in the same way because it was just like so sudden, and it was like it just shows you how you should kind of live your life a certain way, and it makes you think more about you know the legacy you leave and the amount. Of respect that I have, admiration that I have, inspiration that I have for Chadwick Boseman now, even though I always did as an actor, as his craft. Like, I don't know how much you guys watched. And I know now people will appreciate a lot more stuff, more than the Black Panther. But I mean, Jackie Robinson has been a hero of mine since I was a child. I mean, everybody kind of knows what Jackie Robinson did. But if you read about some of the stuff he went through, and he kind of put that to life in the movie. And, you know, I did a lot of research on Jackie Robinson. I always did reports. Whenever teachers would ask you to do a report on favorite people, I would always try to pick, you know, historical figures that I could relate to in that sense. So Jackie Robinson was one of the first ones I ever did. But some of the stuff he went through, and, like, Chadwick Boseman kind of brought that to life. And James Brown, like, his, his impersonation, his mannerism doesn't was spot on. And Thurgood Marshall and so on. But the thing that inspired me the most about him and the thing that always makes me put things in perspective is he, he knew that his time was limited with, you know, colon cancer and, and cancer 
everybody's been affected by it and it's <sighs> but I'm actually gonna try not to get like emotional emotional because it really did impact me but <clears throat> he knew his time in this world was limited and still found the strength to leave a legacy knowing what was coming still working and going to chemo in between stuff and you know it's just powerful stuff because he put everything into it into making an impact you know you hear some of the interviews now that are coming out and some of the things that he said you kind of look back and like wow you really had no idea that he was doing all this with that in the background and that just takes tremendous fortitude strength like the amount of, of respect so for me when I always talk about We Move, and if this isn't your first show, like, you know I say it all the time, like, he's the epitome of that. Because he got news that a lot of people in this world might have just mailed it in after that. Because your, your time, you know. No one wants to know, but he knew. And his response was, We Move. Like, I'm gonna do as much as I can before my time is up. And he did. And it's like so... It's inspiring, man. It, it really is. And I, I just am so in awe of it. it. It's just... And the other thing is that one of the last things he did, he was at the dunk contest in the beginning of the year. And, you know, he did some, some stories on his pages and his social media. And people were making fun of him. Because he looked really skinny. And you look back now. And I bet all those people feel really stupid. And. This is why I try to be nice to everybody. Like I don't understand why people act the way they act. Because you. No matter what. You see me right now. Right. And I'm pretty transparent about everything. But. My point is. You have. Absolutely. No idea what's going on behind the camera. Behind. So the, the, the eyes of somebody. He never let anybody know what he was going through. Because he didn't want you to feel sorry for him. And people still say those kind of things. And it, it kind of bothers me. Because I'm always a person that tries to be like positive. And it's just like. For people. To say those kinds of things. Now they feel really stupid don't they. So when you. Before you judge somebody. And this is anybody. Before you judge anybody. Try to understand, you have no idea what that person is going through. None. None. I could go more into depth about stuff like that, but I'm not trying to get too depressing. But I have met or had people in my life, close friends, that are not with us today because of things that happened that no one saw coming. So just watch what you say to people. Because... Look at the amount of adulation, respect, like, that I have for this man. And it's just like, I hope you get it. I hope everybody gets it. I don't want to get too serious there, but it, it's been on my mind for a while. And I feel like people need to hear that kind of stuff. Like, be kind. Be kind. You don't know whose day you ruined. And you don't know who day, whose day you made. But why not get satisfaction in making somebody's day instead of ruining somebody's day? Like, if you're one of those people that have one of those troll accounts, if it makes you feel better, like, whatever. I get trolled on a daily basis, and it is what it is. But why not try to make somebody's day? Wouldn't that make you feel good, too? That's what I try to do. I try to make somebody's day every day. No matter what it is. I'm a lot of pineapple. That just ruined my day, because I want more pineapple. Try to make, try it. That's what I'm challenging you guys to do. Try to make someone's day tomorrow. See how it makes you feel to make someone happy. I'm getting one more sip. I gotta get it in. Ugh. But try to make someone happy. I used to have a lot of hate in my heart when I was younger. I had a lot of bad stuff happen to me at a young age. I saw a lot of bad things happen at a young age. And it made me think that the world owed me something. It really did. Just being honest. I felt like, why should I be nice to anybody with the hands I was dealt? And one day, I kind of just challenged myself to say, 
make someone's day. I don't care if it's a complete stranger. I don't care if it sounds corny. Walk up to a random person. Man, I like those shoes. Yo, those are dope. Where'd you get those from? I'm telling you. Smile when you say it. Don't be sarcastic when you say it. Be honest. Let's try it. And I tried it. I did it. Whatever it was. Whether it was helping someone, an older person cross the street. Or, 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 or paying for the person's meal in front of me when I was in college and I didn't have any money. I'm not joking with you. This is all, this, I'm not making this up. Things of that nature. Not being rude, just giving people compliments, spreading kindness. You know how good that made me feel? When people, the, to see the look on somebody's face, when I know that, it, that whatever I did or said made them happy, be the fucking change in this world for the good. Stop spreading crap and hate and, 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 and trying to make people feel bad because it makes you feel good. Like, spread positive, see how much, it makes me happy thinking about making other people happy right now. I'm telling you, you will see not only how the people around you change for the better, how the people that you interact with on a daily basis change for the better, how your surroundings change for the better, but how you change for the better. I'm telling you, just pay it forward, man. It works. I hate all the hunky-dory positivity BS crap, but you want to make fun of me? Fine. Sometimes I'll joke back with you. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for it, but... Spread that positivity. My last piece of advice to you for the day, because I, I saw something before and I had to witness this, but never make decisions based off of emotion. Let yourself chill out. Don't say things before they exit your mouth because you're mad. Sit on it. Come back when you're here. Because when you say stupid stuff, you can't take it back. And I'm guilty of that in my past too. But when I hear stupid stuff now, whether it's on the phone, put the phone down. Let it sit. Don't reply from an emotional, stupid standpoint. Because then you're going to come back later and say, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. Blah, blah. Just shut up and don't do it. Be positive. Like this sip I'm about to have. This is going to be so good. Hold on. And thank you guys in the comments who told me that it was bad lens chugs. Yes, it was. I do read them. And I tried to answer you all. Oh, so good. But anyway, it's been your boy, King Strats. I love y'all. Thank you for watching. If you did, 37 minutes of fun, even though I said I was going to make it a short video, and it's still not, because I don't know how to use short mukbangs. It is what it is. You know what I'm doing. The hand signs they made it to YouTube.